So look at that, just pop it off and then you can clean out your front dust filter in two seconds. This here, my friends, is Antex Performance One full-sized ATX tower case, which I haven't built in a full tower case in a long time. So I'm really excited about this case in particular because it comes in with the size overall on the outside feeling more like a mid tower case. Yet inside here, we've got support for EATX. We've got the support for those extra long and fat and thick juicy graphics cards, as well as being able to mount those vertically with a lot of room of clearance at the front. So it's not going to hit the tempered glass. Now, before we even start building in this case, one thing that sets it apart from any other case that I've built in so far is just the modularity of the panels. We take off one screw at the back and the glass panels are then able to be taken off both at the front and rear as well as the top as well as the cable covers which will then require an additional three screws to remove. Also today's video is sponsored by Antec. However, if you're watching this, that means the product's really good because I don't take sponsorships for products that suck. Well, actually in this case, you'd kind of want the case to suck air. Yeah. Though this time around, Antec have also listened to feedback and included not just three PWM 140mm fans at the front, they've also finally included that rear fan so you don't have to go out and spend any additional money on fans and they're also 30mm thick PWM. They'll be putting these four fans through a torture test later with temperatures to see if this case really is the Performance One and we're going to be doing this today with a build here involving the Radeon 7900 XTX and the Z790 Taichi Carrara with a 13900K. So this is pretty much going to be some of the max heat that we can put through a case. But also on top of that, I really want to try out an AMD GPU in my main PC just to see if it's going to be especially better than my RTX 3090. Because one thing with the 4080 and 4090, I just feel like those cards were just really just too big in general as opposed to a 7900 XTX, can fit in even a lot of mini ITX cases, especially the smaller versions that are hitting the market. Also, we're just about to screw in the motherboard and this is just a really nice touch is they've segmented all the screws to how you would need them as well as giving you extra little slots here for say longer radiator screws and things like that that you may need in your build. So the more we build in this case, the more I like this thing. So we're just about to install the power supply and this is the signature edition 1000 watt platinum also from Antec. And I've been using their power supplies on my test benches for all the benchmarking here at Tech Yes City and they don't miss a beat. They're also extremely quiet. This is also on the 850 watt gold rated that we used in the past. This one's even more beefier and it's got a thousand watts on the 12 volt rail and also comes with a 10 year warranty. And since this is going to be predominantly a video editing PC, we're actually going to install two one terabyte SSDs in RAID 0. However, I would have liked these to have been MLC drives. I think that would have given them a serious advantage. But one thing about these drives is that they are RGB. And since this has a clear glass rear panel, we'll be able to see the RGB on the rear of the build, which should look pretty cool. So you may have noticed up until this point in time, we have been doing things in an unorthodox manner in that we put the power supply in first without connecting the modular cables, which you should probably connect the cables first in a lot of cases because there's not enough room. But in the Performance One here, we've got the room, even with a 160 mil long power supply, to just connect all those cables easily after we've inserted the power supply. 
but I also wanted to test out if we did the whole build first, installing the water cooler last, are we going to come in any problems? So we're gonna do that right now, but this is the Vortex 360 from Antec. This is their latest water cooler, ARGB on the head, ARGB on the fans. And then after that, we're gonna connect all the fans up as well. See if we come into any difficulties. So finishing up this build, I am just blown away. From start to finish, we came into zero hiccups. This is easily, so far, I gotta still test the temperatures, which we're installing Windows now, and we're gonna do very soon. But so far, this build is a 10 out of 10, this case. It's absolutely phenomenal what Antec have done, where it's almost like they've just thought about everything from start to finish and made it so that any inconveniences, even for someone building their first PC, are just not going to be there. So this thing is just so straightforward, so user-friendly, and the end look is also gonna be extremely professional, both on the front and the rear. Though, let's get on to seeing if this case sucks, <laughs> in a good way. So we're gonna test out the temperatures now with this 7900 XTX, as well as the 13900K, which we've actually gone into the BIOS, disable the e-cores because I'm having latency issues when I've got uh, e-cores on when it comes to editing videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you're having uh, sort of some stuttering and problems in Windows, maybe we should disable your e-cores too. But we're gonna be dumping hopefully over 500 watts into this case and testing it with the side panels on versus off just as a baseline test to see if the case's airflow is good and if it's the final component to basically say if this case is 10 out of 10, not just in the actual ease of building, but the performance too. Now, a really cool feature on the Performance One is this right here. It's a digital readout of your CPU temperatures, but also if you press the button on the right-hand side here, you can change that to your GPU temperatures. And in order to get this to work, all you have to do is download the iUnity software from Antec's website. It's a really lightweight package, won't take up any system resources, well, very minimal. And it'll also give you a very clean look on things that matter for your gaming PC or your video editing PC. For instance, the core utilization on CPU and GPU, as well as the clock speeds, the DDR4 memory speeds and how much you have, and also most importantly, the temperatures on both. Now besides this temperature button is a USB Type-C, two USB 3s, and a four pole mic in speaker out, and then besides that your reset button, and then your power button, which is bigger than your reset button. <music> So after a couple of hours of testing this case out, we are now on the final test here, and that is the i9-13900K with the 7900XTX dumping nearly 670 watts <laughs> into this case, and we're checking out the de temperatures with the glass on versus the glass off. And this is actually giving some really good results so far. We've got another two minutes to run on this benchmark. But one really sad thing I had to do, which is no fault of the case or the cooler, I'm actually gonna make a separate video on this because it's actually really sad, is the i9-3900K, when I disabled the e-cores, it goes to 5.5 gigahertz all cores, and the CPU is running up to 103 degrees. Now, we tune that down, 500 megahertz to five gigahertz all cores, and so it's now 140 something watts down from 250 watts. So basically from the wall, we're saving 110 watts of power dumpage and our CPU is running over 25 degrees cooler now. 
just for 10% performance. And the sad thing is too, it's not even a true 10% performance because the CPU is getting so hot internally that it's going down to 5.4 gigahertz. So yeah, anyway, I wanted to test out this CPU consistently, hence why I did this. And our CPU temperatures are already looking really good. In this case with the glass on, it actually scored a one degree victory. But let's now move over to the final result. So we've now got the final results in for the Antec Performance 1 with the included default fans just plugged into the ASRock Z790 motherboard. And what we had here was one degree higher with the glass on on the GPU when both the CPU and GPU are going at max load. And this is a 400 watt dumpage straight into the case. It's not a blower style cooler either, just dumps all that heat just straight in there. And <laughs> it says to the case, just deal with it. And in this case, all pun intended, it did deal with it with the temperatures going up one degree on the GPU core from 68 to 69 degrees. And then the memory junction went up one degree as well. And then the hotspot temperature went up two degrees from 98 to 100 degrees. The CPU temperatures with the glass on versus off went up one degree during this test as well. But like we said before, when it was just the CPU by itself, it did perform really well, scoring actually a one degree advantage with the glass on meaning that Antec have done a great job in optimizing airflow on this design of the Performance Ones. Though with those numbers out of the way, it's time to give this thing a conclusion. And honestly guys, this is the best case I have built in to date from start to finish. Such an easy case to get such an immaculate schmick looking build, both front and rear without any effort. There's also no sharp edges. Everything is just minimalistic, yet so simple, and it looks so good. And then on top of all that, we've got the airflow with the four included fans being top notch as well. So this thing is pretty much as close to a 10 out of 10 that you are going to get with a case. And then to top all that off, it's 150 bucks and it's full size ATX, but it's kind of not full size ATX in that the whole case itself isn't so large. So this thing is just a win. It's in another league of its own, not just versus previous Antec cases that I've looked at, but versus any other case that I've taken a look at. It's like these guys at Antec basically said, how can we make this thing as easy as possible, but not exclude any of the things that enthusiasts are going to love in a build. So in my opinion, they've just absolutely nailed it with this case. And looking at the rear of this build, I'm thinking, wow, that looks clean. And if you guys follow a lot of my builds, my cable management isn't my strongest point. But the fact that this thing can just do it so easily and get such a good result with that rear glass also looking just as good as the front of this PC, where usually if I'm looking for a case, I usually make sure the, the rear is no glass at all because I don't want people seeing my cable management. But this time around, it is completely different. I want people to see the rear of this build because it just looks so good. And for $150, I can easily understand now why Antec wanted me to delay doing this video because they told me, Brian, there's no point in you releasing this video because the case is just sold out. But now it's coming back into stock and it's just an absolute winner of a case. Antec, keep doing this and please do it on mini ITX and other form factors as well because yeah, complete home run here. Mind blown. But with this case, I went out of my way to also try and find some negative points, uh, building in an unorthodox manner and just nothing. I couldn't get there. <laughs> in the end, the people at Antec thought of everything from start to finish, and I love to see that. Good job, Antec. And if you guys get this case, you are absolutely going to love it. Also, some things I forgot to mention, you can fit a 420 mil rad at the front of the case, and at the rear, you've got the option for two 3.5 inch hard drives with that cage, which you can remove if you want to, or you can have four SSDs and one 3.5 inch or two 3.5 inches and three SSDs at the rear. In terms of included zip ties, Velcro ties, as well as screws, they've included more than you'll need for this build. So they've done a really good job there. The cooler and the RGB, which is from Team Force for the SSDs, they all have ARGB controllers, which we've all hooked up and daisy chained off one controller and then plugged that off the motherboard and that all works from ASRock's BIOS. So I can just have any RGB I want 
just by setting it in the BIOS, it all matches every component and I don't have to install any software in Windows, which is one of the things I love about ASRock boards too. So do let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of this build. Are you digging it? Would there be some things you would change personally? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I will put some links in the description below if you wanna check out some of the components we used here today, especially the Antec Performance One. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that like button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.